Chapter Four, Part Two of Commentary on the Gospel of John, Book Five, by Cyril of Alexandria, translated by Reverend Philip Edward Pusey. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Twenty six. I have many things to say and to judge of you. Seeing that the Jews condemn him more recklessly, and though they have nothing at all to accuse him of, are haughty on account only of the poorness of his birth after the flesh, and therefore say that he is not. He shamed them mildly, having said above more openly, Ye judge after the flesh, I judge no man. But judging after the flesh will reasonably have some such meaning as this. They who delight only in earthly things see naught of the heavenly good things, but looking only to illustriousness in this life, admire the wealthy or him who boasts in some other petty glories but they who after the law of god examine thoroughly into the nature of things say that he is really the man worthy of love and admiration who has within him the desire to live according to the counsel and will of him who hath made him for low position after the flesh will nothing harm the soul of the man who is accustomed to do well and on the other hand illustrious portion in this life and the splendour of wealth will nothing profit those who refuse to live aright they therefore judge after the flesh as we said just now who look not to holiness who use not to prove their walk their manners but turn aside their mind to only earthly things and deem worthy of all admiration him that is brought up in wealth and luxury ye then o most unwise rulers of the jews albeit by the law of moses instructed unto accuracy of giving judgment judging upon no grounds at all condemn for only bodily low estate him who through many wondrous works is shown to you to be god but i will not imitate your ill instructedness nor will i pass such kind of judgment on you for nothing at all is human nature for what is this perishable and earthly body rottenness and the worm and naught else yet i will not for this reason condemn you nor because ye are men by nature will i therefore decide that ye ought wholly to be spurned i have many things to say and to judge of you that is every accusing word has a full office to you word not of one thing alone shall i accuse you but of many and in none shall i speak falsely as do ye i have to judge you as disbelieving as braggarts as insulters as fighters against god as without feeling as unthankful as wicked as lovers of pleasure rather than habitually loving god as receiving honour one of another and seeking not the honour that cometh from the only as setting on fire the spiritual vineyard as not feeding aright the flock entrusted to you by god as not leading them by the hand unto him that is proclaimed by the law and the prophets that is to say me such things will the saviour be declaring to the jews but by adding i have yet many things to say and to judge of you he threatens them that he will one day appear as their judge who seem to them to be naught by reason of the flesh but he that sent me is true and i the things which i heard from him these speak i unto the world having taken leave of the jews ill instructedness and reckoned as naught those who dared without restraint to revile him he returns again to what he was saying at the beginning reserving the judging them in that in all freedom for not this present but for the fitting time and retaining to the time of the appearance its proper aim for he came not to judge the world but to save the world as himself says wherefore keeping fast hold of the things befitting him and repeating the word that calls unto salvation he carries on his exhortation for herein was it meet that we should both marvel at the measure of his forbearance and the exceedingness of his inherent love for man 
wherefore doth peter too write of him who when he was reviled reviled not again when he suffered he threatened not but committed himself to him that judges righteously therefore will i expend he says discourse upon you now in particular not for what ye are wont to do it for fault-finding i mean and exercise unto naught that is profitable but having reserved the judging you for its fit time i will keep to what is for your good and will not cease from care of you even though ye of your innate madness foolishly insult me i said therefore to you just now i am the light of the world he that followeth me shall not walk in darkness but shall have the light of life at this ye unreasonably vexed sprang sharply upon me saying thou bearest record of thyself thy record is not true to this again i even though i bear record of myself my record is true for i know whence i came and whither i go but if i seem to be burdensome to you saying these things to you if i be not a reliable witness of the dignities accruing to me by nature yet he that sent me is true and the things which i heard of him these speak i unto the world i speak the same he says as the father who sent me i utter words conformable to his in saying that i am by nature light the things then which i heard god the father say of me these things i speak to the world if then i speak faults according to you and my record is not true ye must certainly need say that the fathers spake falsely before me but he is true therefore i do not speak falsely and if ye do not believe my words reverence he says the voice of him that sent me for what said he of me behold a man the day spring is his name and again to those who reverence him and unto you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness arise and healing in his wings and to me whom ye unknowing insult he says behold i have given thee for a covenant of the people for a light of the nations but that i am also a light was told you by him for he says shine shine o jerusalem for thy light is come and the glory of the lord hath risen upon thee these things did i hear the father who sent me say of me and therefore do i say that i am the light of the world but ye disparage me because of the flesh only judging not rightly and therefore are ye bold to say frequently thou bearest record of thyself thy record is not true therefore for it is meet to sum up the whole mind of what is before us he shows that the jews are fighting right against god and that not only with his words but also with the father's decree for he knows that his son is by nature light and calls him therefore dayspring and son of righteousness but they pulling down the destruction of unbelief upon their own heads reject the truth calling good evil and therefore shall rightly the woe follow them twenty seven they knew not that he spake to them of the father the spirit glad is astonishment stricken at the senselessness of the jews and with great reason for what more without understanding than such who when much discourse and often had been made to them concerning god the father conceive not of him a whit when they hear our saviour saying but he that sent me is true what then is the plea and why the blessed evangelist says that the jews knew not that christ in these words signified god the father to them we must need say for since the saviour said to them if ye had known me ye should have known my father also in order that in this too he may be found saying what was true the evangelist brings in those who knew not the son as ignorant of the father too for the son is so to speak a door and gate unto the knowledge of the father wherefore he also said 
No man cometh unto the Father but by me. For the mind darting up from image to archetype, imageth the other from what is before it. It was necessary, therefore, to show that the Jews had no conception of the Father, since they would not be led, upward mounting from the knowledge of the Son, to conception of the Father. Wherefore does the evangelist clearly show that when Christ says, He that sent me is true, they knew not that he spake to them of the Father. 28. When ye have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall ye know that I am. Imitating the most excellent physicians, he lays bare the cause of their soul's infirmity, and clearly opens what it was that hinders their going with resolution to understanding and faith towards him. For since looking at the flesh and its family, they were induced to think slightingly of him, and having this veil over the eyes of their understanding, they would not know that he is God, even though he is seen as man. Needs did he address them, saying, When ye have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall ye know that I am. That is to say, When ye cease from your slight and groveling conception of me, when ye have some lofty and supermundane thought of me, and believe that I am God of God, even though for your sakes I am become man as you, then shall ye know clearly that I am the light of the world. For this I just now told you. For what would any longer hinder, he says, him who is wholly admitted to be very God, from being also light of the world? For not to so great depth of madness and daring will any go as then too to venture to say, Thy record is not true. For he will in no wise accuse what God by nature and very shall say. It is then most evident from the words too of the Saviour, that if we have a mean opinion of him, and consider him to be bare man, and bereft of the Godhead by nature, we shall surely both disbelieve him, and not admit him as Saviour and Redeemer. And what is the result? We have fallen from our hope. For if salvation is through faith, and faith be gone, what will yet save us? But if we believe and lift up to God-befitting height the only begotten, even though he hath become man, advancing as with a fair wind, and speeding across the all troublous sea of life, we shall safely mourn the city that is above, there to receive the rewards of believing. The same in another way. When ye have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall ye know that I am. Having with many and good words bathed the wrath of the Jews, he sees it not a whit the less swelling, for they ceased not heedlessly blaspheming, Yea, at one time they set aside his speech, and impiously call him a liar. For to say thy record is not true, what else is it than this? At another time again, to him out of love declaring the things that belong to salvation, and on this account saying, If ye believe not that I am, ye shall die in your sins. They began hotly to oppose him, and arraying against those utterances of love their words of madness said, Who art thou? For them, therefore, who thus unmitigatingly wallowed in unreasoning audacity, there was need of a word that should sober them, and persuade them to be more gently disposed, and put a bridle on their tongue even against its will. Therefore was he threatening them, telling them most clearly that they shall not escape punishment for their impiety. But even though they see him for the present forbearing, yet when their impiety towards him has gone forth to its dread consummation, I mean death and the cross, they shall undergo all dread justice, and shall receive in return intolerable lot, that of the war with the Romans which after the Saviour's cross befell them from the wrath above from God. And that they should suffer all terrible things, the Saviour again signified more clearly to them, saying, At one time to the weeping women, 
daughters of jerusalem weep not for me but weep for yourselves and for your children and another again when ye shall see jerusalem compassed with armies then shall ye say to the mountains cover us and to the hills fall on us for to such an extent do the sufferings of the war overcome the jews that every kind of death was to them pleasanter and rather to be chosen than the trial of them their removal from their country the enslavements of those who inhabit it and their most savage slaughter and the famines in every city and their child devourings therein josephus too relates in his history when then he says ye having betrayed to the cross the son of man endure your retributive punishment and pay penalties correspondent to your daring deeds against me then shall ye weeping know that i am the all-powerful that is god for if one sparrow enter not the snare of the fowler without the will of god how shall a whole country he saith and the beloved nation go on to destruction so complete except god supreme over all had surely permitted that so it should be evil therefore and all dread is the contempt of god which bringeth to the consummation of things to be deprecated wherefore paul too rebuketh some saying of god or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long-suffering not knowing that the goodness of god is leading thee to repentance but after thy hardness and impenitent heart treasurest up unto thyself wrath in the day of wrath the same in another way christ spent long time dwelling with the jews and speaking in every synagogue so to say and addressing them every sabbath day and setting before them often and ungrudgingly profitable teaching was continually inviting them to the illumination through the spirit and verily he saith in that he is god by nature and very i am the light of the world but they thinking most foolishly were ever gainsaying him who said these things for says he thou bearest record of thyself thy record is not true and not at contradictions in words did the daring of the jews stay nor only in love of reviling was their untamed audacity consummated but going without stint through all savageness they at last betrayed him both to cross and death but since he was by nature life having burst the bonds of death he arose from the dead and as was reasonable departs from jewish defilement and hasted away from israel in that with justice and betaking himself to the gentiles he invited all to the light and to the blind he freely bestowed recovery of sight it befell then that after the death on the cross of our saviour christ the understandings of the jews were darkened in that the light had departed forth from them and that the hearts of the gentiles were enlightened in that the very light beamed upon them when then he says ye have lifted up the son of man then shall ye know that i am instead of i will await the consummation of your impiety i will not bring upon you wrath before its time i will accept the passion and death i will endure along with the rest this too but when ye shall betray to the cross the son of man deemed by you to be bare man then shall ye know even against your will that not falsely have i said that i am the light of the world for when ye see yourselves darkened the innumerable multitude of the gentiles enlightened by having me with them how will ye not even against your will agree that i am of a truth the light of the world for that the saviour was going to depart from the synagogue of the jews after his coming to life again from the dead is doubtful to none for it has been accomplished and done yet may one see it somehow yea even clearly from his words while ye have the light walk in the light lest darkness come upon you for the repression and withdrawal of light generates darkness 
and again the presence of light causes darkness to vanish therefore is christ shown as being of a truth light who darkened the jews through his departure from them and enlightened the gentiles through his presence with them and a bitter lesson to the jews was their experience of dread things the same in another way when ye have lifted up the son of man then shall ye know that i am since looking only he says to the flesh ye believe that i am mere man and deem that i am one like yourselves but the dignity of the godhead and the glory from thence do not so much as enter your mind a most evident token to you of my being god of truly god and light of light shall be your all dread and most lawless deed of daring the cross that is and the death of the flesh thereupon for when ye see the issue of your mad folly frustrate of its purpose and the snare of death crushed in pieces for i shall surely rise from the dead then shall ye even against your will and of necessity at length assent to what i said to you and shall confess that i am by nature god for i shall be superior to death and decay i being by nature life shall raise again my temple but if to overmaster death and to triumph over the meshes of corruption belong to him who is by nature god and to no other being how shall i not all contradiction and all doubt being removed be shown thereby to overcome all things mightily and without trouble therefore does the saviour say that his cross shall be a sign to the jews and a most evident demonstration of his being by nature god and this you may see him elsewhere too clearly saying for when many and unnumbered prodigies had been shown forth by him the pharisees once came to him tempting him and saying master we would see a sign from thee but he since he saw the imaginations which were going on in them and was not ignorant that they were bitterly minded says an evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign and a sign shall not be given to it but the sign of the prophet jonas for as jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly so shall the son of man too be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth hearest thou how to the jews asking a sign as a proof that he is god by nature even though they said it tempting him he says that no other shall be shown to them save the sign of the prophet jonas that is the three days death and the coming to life again from the dead for what token of god befitting authority so great and manifest as to undo death and overthrow decay albeit by divine sentence having the mastery over human nature for in adam it heard dust thou art and unto dust shalt thou return but it was in the power of christ the saviour both to end his anger and by blessings to overthrow the death which from his curse prevailed but that the jews exceedingly feared the sign of the resurrection as mighty to convince that christ is by nature god their final deed will clearly tell us for when they heard of the resurrection of the saviour and that he was not found in the tomb terrified and exceeding fearful thereat they planned to buy off the informations of the soldiers by large money for they gave them money to say his disciples came by night and stole him while we slept mighty therefore is the sign of the resurrection having undoubted demonstration that jesus is god whereat the hard and unbending heart of the jews was sore troubled End of chapter four chapter five part one of commentary in the gospel of john book five by cyril of alexandria translated by rev philip edward pusey this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter five that not inferior in might and wisdom to god the father is the son yea rather his very wisdom and might 
and of myself I do nothing, but as the Father taught me, I speak these words. He speaketh in more human wise, in that the Jews could not otherwise understand, nor endure to hear from him unveiled things God befitting. For on these matters are they found hurling stones at him, and setting it down as blasphemy, that, being man, he made himself God, withdrawing, therefore, the surpassingness of God-befitting glory, and having much bereft his language of its splendor. He condescends most excellently to the infirmities of the hearers, and, since searching into their mind within, he finds that they know him not to be God. He fashions his discourse in human wise, that their dispositions may not be again kindled unto anger, and they foolishly dart away from cleaving to him even a little. Ye shall know, therefore, he says, when ye have lifted up the Son of Man, that I am. Ye shall know again in like manner that of myself I do nothing, but as my Father taught me, so I speak. And what need of these words, tell me, may some one haply say, and what does Christ teach us herein? Therefore we will say, piously, and with fair distinction expanding each of the things said, Ye have never ceased, he saith, falling upon my deeds, as though wrought madly and unholily. Ye condemned me oft as not refusing to transgress, as want to act contrary to the lawgiver for I loosed the paralytic from his so great infirmity. I compassionated a man on the Sabbath. But seeing, he saith, you who ought to have wondered at it, finding fault thereat, and missing much of what befit me, yea, even just now I explaining to you what belongs to salvation, was persuading you to advance to the desire of sharing in light. Then did I show you the very light, for declaring to you mine own nature, I said, I am the light of the world. And ye, acting and counselling most unadvisedly, rose up against my words, and dared unrestrainedly to say, Thy record is not true. When then ye have lifted up the Son of Man, that is, when ye compass him about with death, and behold him superior to the bonds of death, for I shall rise from the dead, since I am God by nature. Then ye shall know, he says, that I do nothing of myself, but as my Father taught me, so I speak. For ye will learn when ye see that the Son too is God by nature, that I am by no means self-opinionate, but ever of one will with God the Father, and whatsoever he doth, these things I too do not shrink from doing, and whatever I know that he speaks, I again speak. For I am of the same essence as he that begat me. For I healed the palsied on the Sabbath day. Ye again were bitterly disposed thereat. Yet showed I you my father working on the Sabbath also. For I said, My father worketh hitherto, and I work. Therefore of myself I do nothing. Again I said, I am the light of the world. But ye imagined that I was saying something discordant from the Father, and in this too did I again shame you, showing that he said of me, Behold, I have set thee for a covenant of the people, for a light of the nations. In vain, therefore, he saith, do ye accuse him who ever hath one will with the Father, and doth not dissonant to him, nor endureth to say aught which is not his? For this is the meaning, I think, that we should fit unto the words. But the bitter wild beast will haply leap upon us, the fighter against Christ, I mean Arius, and will cry out upon us, as is likely, and will come and say, when the discourse, sir, was proceeding all right, what made you pressing forward thrust it aside to your own mere pleasure, and do you not blush at secretly stealing away the force of the truth, 
lo clearly the son affirms that he does not of himself but that what he learns of god the father this he also speaks and so is conscious that his father is in superior position to himself what then most excellent sir will such an one hear in return is the son supplied with might and understanding from the father that he may be able to do and to speak without blame how then is he any longer god by nature who borrows from another power and wisdom just as the nature of the creature too has it for to those who from not being obtain being every thing that accrues to them is also surely god-given but not so is it in the son for him the divine scripture knows and proclaims as very god and i think that to him who is by nature god do all good things in perfect degree belong and that which possesses not perfection in every single thing that ought to be admired how will it be by nature god for as incorruption and immortality must surely belong to it naturally and not from without or imported so too the all perfection and lacking not in all good things but if according sir to thy unhallowed and unlearned argument the son be imperfect in regard of being able to do things god befitting and to speak what is right and yet he is the power and wisdom of the father according to the divine scripture to the father rather and not to him will so great an accusal belong for thus defining these things you will say that in potential no longer is god the father perfect nor yet is he wholly wise you see then whither the daring of thine unlearning sinks down and i marvel how this too has escaped thy acumen how tell me will god the father supply might to his own might or how will he render his own wisdom wiser for either one must needs say that it ever advances to something greater and goes forward by little and little to being capable of somewhat more than its existing strength which is both foolish and utterly impossible or must impiously suppose that he is strengthened by another how then will the son be any more called lord of hosts or how will he be any longer conceived of as wisdom and might strengthened according to you and made wise by another away with the blasphemy and absurdity of reasoning for either grant outright that the son is a creature that ye may have the whole of divinely inspired scripture crying out against you or if ye believe that he is by nature god grant grant that the properties of godhead pertain to him in perfect degree for it is the property of the natural being of god neither to be impotent about anything nor to come short of supreme wisdom yea rather to be wisdom and powers very self but in wisdom naught is through teaching nor yet in the chief and truly conceived of power do we see imported power but that by examining also the very nature of things we may more accurately test what are said by christ we will add this too to what has been said what so great deed hath the only begotten made man wrought that will surpass his inherent power for it was like i suppose that some would say that it then resulted that he should fitly say as having borrowed the power from god the father of myself i do nothing because he drove out the evil spirit let go the palsied from his infirmity freed the leper from his suffering gave the blind to see sated a no easily reckoned multitude of men with five loaves appeased the raging sea with a word raised lazarus from the dead shall we say that the manifestation herein is superior to his innate power then how tell me did he establish the so great heaven and spread it out as a tent to dwell in how founded he the earth how became he artificer of sun and moon and what pertains to the firmament 
how created he angels and archangels thrones and lordships and yet besides the seraphim he who was in so vast and supernatural position lacking neither might nor wisdom from another how could he be powerless in matters so small or how should he who by the holy prophets is glorified as wisdom need one who must teach him what to say to the jews for i hear a certain one say the lord who made the earth by his power who established the world by his wisdom and stretched out the heavens in his discretion and besides the divine daniel too says blessed be the name of god for ever and ever for wisdom and understanding and might are his but if his according to the prophet's voice are both might and wisdom who will any more endure the wordiness of the heterodox saying that the wisdom and power of the father is supplied with both power and wisdom from another but if we said says he that there were some other to supply to the son which he lacked of power or to teach him reasonably could ye attack us with words knowing that ye were on the side of him as insulted but since we say that god the father gives this what plea for a grievance any longer appears to you from thence therefore if ye think that ye will in nothing wrong the son in respect of his being by nature unlike him who begat him even though he be said to be supplied by him remember man your late words and be taught thereby not to be offended grant him to be in all things equal to his progenitor and in no way or respect whatever inferior to him but if it draw thee aside from the reasonings of orthodoxy and persuade thee to deem of him what is not lawful why dost thou vainly attempt to beguile us with so rotten words for it will make no difference at all whether god the father himself or any other than he be said to give aught to the son for having once fallen under the charge of receiving aught what gain will he derive though the person of the giver were exceeding illustrious for what difference tell me will it make to a person who refuses a blow to be struck with a wooden rod or a gilt one for it is not the suffering in this way that is good but the not suffering at all the son therefore being proved to be lacking in both power and wisdom if he be shown to receive aught from him and having herein complete accusal how is it not utterly foolish that we should smite our hearers with stale words and by inventions of deceit smear over the charge by deeming that no one else but the father alone is admitted as supplying him but i marvel at how though they think they are wise and in no slight degree practised in the art of making subtle distinctions with words foreign to the subject that this escaped them namely that by disparaging the impress of god the father that is to say the son ye do not so much accuse himself as him whose impress he is since he must of necessity so be as he is seen to be in the sun but says he the sun's own voice will compel thee even against thy will to consent to what he did not disdain to utter for himself hath confessed that he doth nothing of himself but that whatever he was taught of god the father these things he speaks well then to thee good sir let the things even that are well said seem to be not well seeing that thou deniest the light of truth but we again will go our own way and will deem of the only begotten as is customary and wanted with becoming piety comparing them with what is before us for if the only begotten had said i do nothing of myself but receiving power from god the father i both work wonders and am marvelled at it would be even thus a speech showing that he nowise ought to be accused therefore yet would our opponent have seemed to oppose us with greater show of reason 
but since he says simply and absolutely without any addition i do nothing of myself we will not surely say that he is blaming his own nature is infirm for aught but that he means something else that is true and incapable of being found fault with in order that transforming the force of the expression to man we may see accurately what he says let there be two men having the same nature equal in strength and like-minded one with another and let one of them say of myself i do nothing will he say this as powerless and able to do nothing at all of himself or as having the other co-approver and co-minded and co-joined with him thus conceive i pray of the son too yea rather much more than this for since the jews were foolishly springing upon him as he was working marvels even accusing the breach of the sabbath and imputing to him transgression of the law he at length showed god the father in all things co-minded and co-approver skilfully shaming the unbridled mind of them who believe him not for it was like that some would now shrink from any inclination to blame him when he said that he did all things according to the will of the father and pointed out his own will in his for that the son does all things according to the will of the father will show that he is not less and an underworker but of him and in him and consubstantial for since he is the very wisdom of the father and his living counsel he confesses that he does not do aught else than what the father wills whose both wisdom and counsel he is seeing that the understanding too that is in us does not aught of itself but accomplishes all that seems good to us and little is the example to the verity but it hath an image not obscure of the truth and as the understanding that is in us is accounted naught else than we ourselves in the same way i deem the wisdom of god the father that is to say the son is not other than he in regard to sameness of essence and exact likeness of nature for the father is father and the son son in their own person but because to this he adds as the father taught me i speak these things let no one think that the son is in need of teaching for anything whatsoever for great is the absurdity of reasoning herein but the force of what is said has this meaning for the jews who were not able to understand aught that was good were not only offended at what were marvellously wrought but also when aught god befitting was uttered one may see them in the same case and specially when he truly says i am the light of the world they were both cut to the heart and counselled all daring deeds but the lord jesus christ that he might convict them of vainly raging about this says that his own words are god the father's saying taught in more human wise yet we shall find the force of the speech not without a subtle inner thought and if the enemy of the truth will not admit what is human he very greatly wrongs the plan of the economy with flesh for the only begotten humbled himself being made man and for this reason oft times he speaketh as man but let him know again that the saying as the father taught me so i speak will no way injure the son in respect of god befitting dignity for we will show that this saying of his too is on all sides sound and right but let yon accuser of the doctrines of piety answer us who ask who tell me teaches the new-born babe to use human voice why does he not roar as a lion or imitate some other of the irrational creation but nature its teacher fashioning after the property of the sower that which is of him must need surely and will proceed to that common sound used by all it is then possible without being taught to learn of nature which infuseth so to say 
the whole property of the sower into the offspring thus therefore does the only begotten himself here to affirm that he learned of the father for what nature is to us that full surely may god the father be reasonably conceived of to him and as we since we are men and of men learning untaught from nature speak as befits men so he too since he is god of god by nature learnt as of his own nature to speak as god and to say things befitting god as is i am the light of the world for what he knows that he is because of the father from whom he is for he is light of light this he said that he learnt of him having a sort of untaught learning of god befitting works and words from the own nature of him who begat him mounting up as by necessary laws to sameness in all things of will and of word with god the father for how must not sameness of will and equality and likeness in words needs be without contradiction inexistent in those who have the same nature of god altogether are we speaking not of us for us divergences of manners and differences of wills and tyrannies of passions drag aside from the limits of what befits but the divine and inconceivable nature being the same always and fixed immovably in its own goods what divergences unto aught else can it have or how will it not altogether advance the straight course of its own purpose and both speak and accomplish what belongs to it the only begotten then being of the same essence with him who begat him and pre-eminent in the dignities of the one godhead will i suppose surely and of necessity work whatever the father himself too works for this is the meaning of doing nothing of himself and will surely speak what belongs to him who begat him not as a minister or bidden or as a disciple but possessing as the fruit of his own nature to use the words also of god the father for herein shines forth clearly and apart from all railing this namely that nothing is said by him as from himself twenty nine and he that sent me is with me and hath not left me alone herein he shows clearly that he interprets the counsel of god the father himself having none other than is in him how could he for he is himself the living and hypostatic counsel and will of him who begat him as is said in the book of the psalms by one of the saints in thy counsel thou guidest me and again lord by thy will thou gavest might to my beauty for in christ are all good things to them that love him but as bringing forth unto our knowledge the things that are in god the father for as this word of ours uttered externally and poured forth through the tongue makes known what is in the deep of our understanding both receiving as some learning the will that is in our mind in respect of anything and impelled by it to utter it in such manner so again we will piously conceive that the son surpassing the force of the example and that he is himself both word and wisdom of god the father uttered what exists in him and since he is not impersonal as is man's but in being and living as having his own being in the father and with the father he says here that he is not alone but that with him is him also that sent him but when he says with me he indicates again something god befitting and mystic for we do not think that he saith thus namely that as god may be for instance with a prophet guarding him that is with his own might and aiding him by his favour or by the enlightenment through the spirit stirring him up to prophecy that so is he that begat him with him 
but here too he puts with me in another sense for he that sent me he says that is to say god the father is in the same nature as i after this sort will you understand that too which is in isaiah the prophet about christ know ye people and be ye worsted for with us is god for our discourse hereon will befit those who have set on him their hope of being saved and these too say with us is god not as though any should imagine that god will be our co-worker and co-assistant but that he will be with us that is of us for the word of god hath become man and in him we have all been saved and burst the bonds of death and put off the corruption of sin since god the word being in the form of god hath come down to us and become with us as then we here understand with us is god for the word of god the father hath become of the same nature with us so here too preserving the same analogy in our thoughts when christ says he that sent me is with me and hath not left me alone we shall clearly understand him to indicate mystically that as we said before god the father is of the same nature as i and hath not left me alone for it were altogether impossible not to have wholly with me god the father of whom i am begotten and perhaps some one will say and will ask more thoughtfully why does the saviour say such things or what was it induced him to come to this explanation to this we will reply showing that profitably and of necessity did he add this too to what he had already said for since he said that as the father taught me i speak these things needs does he show that the father is now co-with him and consubstantial with him that he may be believed to speak what is his as god the things of god and urged on by the natural property of him that begat him to say what is god befitting just as the children of men having of their nature some untaught learning as we said above know truly the properties of human nature we must not therefore be offended when the son says that he learned aught from the father for not for this reason will he be found less than he nor yet alien according to them and let us consider the matter thus not in knowing any thing or in not knowing it is the matter of essence tested but in what each by nature is as for example suppose paul and sylvanus and let paul know and be instructed perfectly in the mystery as to christ sylvanus somewhat less than paul are they then not alike in nature or will paul surpass sylvanus in respect of essence because he knows the depth of the mystery more than the other but i suppose that no one will be foolish to such an extent as ever to suppose that their nature is severed by reason of superiority or inferiority in knowledge when then the condition of essence is as we have said accurately proved not to lie in learning or teaching aught it will no wise injure the son in regard of his being by nature god if he say that he learns aught of his own father for not on this account will he go forth from consubstantiality with him but abideth wholly what he is god of god light of light but you will perhaps say how then the father is greater in knowledge for therefore doth he teach the son but we again will say that we have entirely shown through many words that the wisdom of the father is without any need of learning and instruction and having joined together many arguments thereto we proved that their speech has its exit in boundless blasphemy next it is necessary to tell thee besides that the son's aim and special care is ever to abate his own dignity 
and not to speak much in god-befitting manner because of the form of the servant and of the abasement thence for our sakes undertaken for whither hath he descended and whence unto what removed if he say nothing inferior and not wholly worthy of god-befitting glory for for these reasons he often takes the form of not knowing as man what as god he knows you will see this clearly in the history of lazarus and bethany whom when now of four days and stinking he with wonder-working might and most god-befitting voice caused to return to life look at the economy fashioned herein for knowing that lazarus was dead and having foreannounced this as god to his disciples in human wise he asked saying where have ye laid him o wondrous deed he who was living far away from bethany and was not ignorant as god that lazarus is dead how sought he to learn where the tomb was but you will say thinking most rightly that he made faint of the question arranging something profitable receive therefore in this case too that he economically says that what he knows as god this he learnt of the father not permitting the mad folly of the jews to be further excited and punishing the wrath of the more unlearned he does not introduce god-befitting language to them unsoftened although it rather befitted him so to do but since they were surmising that he is yet mere man he mingling as it were the dignity of the godhead with man-befitting words speaks economically more lowly than he is for i do always the things that please him receive i pray herein too the solution of what seem hard and observe clearly that he rightly interprets of myself i do nothing for for this reason he says testified i that i do nothing of myself when i but now addressed you because it is my habit and practice to do nothing discordant to god the father nor to be able to do anything save what pleaseth my progenitor it is then very clear that in this alone will it be understood that the son doth nothing of himself namely in his ever doing what pleases god the father so that except he had thus wrought he would have done somewhat of himself that is to say contrary to the will of him that begat him it is not then because he comes short of the paternal goodness nor because of being able to achieve naught of his own strength that he here affirms that he does nothing of himself but because he is co-minded and co-willer ever with his progenitor in everything and has no thought of ever accomplishing any thing as it were separately and we do not going off into extravagant notions think that the son is here displaying in himself any virtue proceeding of choice and habit but rather the fruit of nature that knows no turning which needs not the divine help in counselling to do anything for as to the creatures inasmuch as they are capable of turning to the worse and of giving way to changes from better to worse good will be fruit of the pious and virtuous disposition but as to the divine and all-surpassing nature it is not so for since all change in turn is removed and has no place good will be the fruit of the unalterable nature just as heat in fire or cold in snow for fire has obviously its proper action not a voluntary notion but natural and essential without the power of being otherwise except it be driven away from its action by the will of its maker therefore not as we or aught other of the rational creation mastered by our free will to press forward to do what pleases god the father not so does the only begotten say thus but as following the laws of his own nature and able to think and do not save according to the will of him who begat him 
for how could the consubstantial in one godhead ever be at variance with itself or how could it do what liketh it not as though any had power to turn it aside unto aught else for though god the father exist properly and by himself likewise both the son and the spirit yet is the holy and consubstantial trinity not riven asunder unto complete severance but the whole fulness thereof mounteth up unto one nature of godhead we must besides consider this too that no argument can reasonably pull down the son from his sameness of nature with the father seeing that he affirmed that he always doth what pleaseth him but rather being consubstantial with him will he be thereby acknowledged to be god of god by nature and very for who tell me will savour the things of god after a god befitting and exact manner except himself too be by nature god or who will perform always what is pleasing to him if he have not a nature beyond the reach of the worse and have for his share the choice dignity of the divine nature i mean being unable to sin for of the creature it has been said who will boast that he has his heart clean or who will be confident that he is pure from sins and elsewhere the divine scripture extending its utterance even to the very utmost bound says the stars are not pure in his sight for angels albeit far removed from our condition and having a firmer status as to virtue have not kept their own princedom for by reason of some being altogether torn thence and falling into sin the whole nature of rational creation lies under the charge of being recipient of sin and powerless to be imparticipate of change for the worse and the reasonable and godlike living creature upon the earth hath fallen not after any long period but in the first man adam wholly therefore refused to the creature is unchangeability and unturning and being able to be of nature the same to god alone that is in truth will it belong but this shines forth full well in the sun for he did no sin as paul saith neither was guile found in his mouth god therefore is the sun and by nature of god who cannot sin nor ever overstep what befits his nature when then he confesses that he does always those things that please the father let no one be offended nor deem that in lesser rank than the father is he who is of him but let him rather think piously that as god of god by nature he ascendeth under the sameness of counsel and so to speak sameness of work with him who begat him end of chapter five part one chapter five part two of commentary in the gospel of john book five by cyril of alexandria translated by rev philip edward pusey this librivox recording is in the public domain thirty as he spake these words many believed on him the wise evangelist ofttimes marvels at christ practising depreciation in his words because of the infirmity of the hearers and want to achieve something great thereby for whereas it was in his power as god to speak all things and to fashion his discourse free and with royal authority over all keeping measure in his speech economically he encloses many unto obedience many again he persuades to give heed more zealously unto him therefore not empty is the saviour's purpose i mean his speaking to the multitudes in more human wise for some of the more unlearned were used to rage against him not a little and readily to desert him beholding a man and hearing god befitting words but since he was god and man in one having unblamed the authority that pertains to each 
and able to speak without fault in whatever way he please he doing exceeding well fashioned it in view of the levity of his hearers diversely declaring of himself and that often the things that belong to a man such i mean as of myself i do nothing and things akin to this for they understanding nothing whatever but attacking without any investigation what was said went to this common and off-hand mode of understanding it and thought that he said receiving power of god i work miracles and he is with me since i do always what is pleasing to him like-minded then with the unholy jews are the accursed enemies of the truth who contradicting the dogmas of piety and loving to wrangle think meanly of the lord and seizing on what is economically and rightly said to overturn therewith his in-being glory and authority they steal away the beauty of the truth for they have not it seems remembered paul who saith that one ought to cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of god and to bring into captivity every thought to christ and to his obedience they have not known what was uttered concerning the divine oracles by one of the prophets who is wise and he shall understand these things prudent and he shall know them for unless some exceeding great obscurity hovered upon them and a deep darksome veil floated over what were the need for a wise and prudent man being sought after who might find out the knowledge of them and this is abundance for the present matter we will speak rather on what is before us choosing something profitable upon christ when saying these things there believed on him as saith the evangelist not all but many yet albeit he is very god and hath not that is not wholly naked unto his eyes and knows and that with all accuracy that he will not take hold of all unto belief he yet perseveres expending long discourse on them who come to him giving us an example most fair in this too and offering himself a pattern to the teachers of the church for even though all be haply not profited because of their own depravity yet since it was likely that some would reap good thereby we must not be sluggish to lead to what is profitable for if we bury so to say in unfruitful silence the talent given us that is the grace through the spirit we shall be like that wicked servant who said without any restraint to his master i knew thee that thou art an hard man reaping where thou didst not sow and gathering whence thou didst not straw and i was afraid and hid thy talent in the earth lo thou hast thine own but to what end that so wretched man came and what penalty he exacted of him the studious man well knows having met with it not once only in the gospel books therefore let us lay this to heart and consider aright that it is his duty to be free from all indolence in teaching his i mean who is set forth for this work and in no wise to turn aside to despise it even though all be not persuaded by his words but rather shalt thou rejoice at what thou gainest by thy toil it is meet too to consider with all sobriety that which has been spoken by our saviour the disciple is not above his master nor the servant above his lord enough for the disciple that he be as his master and the servant as his lord for if the lord persuade not all on account of the crookedness and hardness of heart of the hearers who will blame our feeble speech though it demand understanding of free choice not of necessity thirty one jesus said therefore to the jews which believed on him if ye abide in my word ye are my disciples indeed he demandeth of those who believe a disposition established and fixed and prepared for the abode of that good which they had once chosen 
and this is faith in him for wavering shows utter senselessness and unprofit seeing that a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways as it is written but to press forward firmly to have hold of what is profitable is indeed wise and most useful as far then as belongs to the more obvious meaning he says this that if they shall desire to obey his words then shall they be surely called his disciples also but as regards some hidden meaning he signifies this for in saying if ye abide in my word he is clearly withdrawing them by degrees and gently from the mosaic teachings and removing them from adherence to the letter and bidding them no longer cleave to what were uttered and done in type but rather to his own word which is clearly the gospel and divine preaching for he it was who ever of old was speaking to us through the holy prophets but they were the mediators through whom that is he spake to us but the gospel preaching will be conceived of as properly his word for not through another do we find that it came to us but through himself wherefore when incarnate he says i that speak am present and paul too will testify saying in the epistle to the hebrews god who in many ways and modes of old spake unto the fathers by the prophets in these last times spake unto us by the son himself therefore a worker unto teaching hath the son come to us at the last periods of the world therefore will the gospel teaching be rightly called his word it were meet then more nakedly and openly to say ye who have accepted the faith in me and though late have yet acknowledged him who of old is preached unto you by the law and prophets no longer be ye attached to the types through moses nor be persuaded to cleave to the shadows of the law nor lay it down that the power of salvation consists wholly in them but in the spiritual teachings and in the gospel preachings that are through me but it was not unlikely yea rather it was undoubted that receiving but now and hardly the faith and having their understanding shaken and ready for unsettling they would not endure such words nor would it all hold out in that they are ever prone to anger but as though the all-wise moses were hereby insulted and put to naught because the things appointed to them of old through him were despised they would have turned readily to their proper daring and ever set upon agreeing with him thought nothing of any longer believing on christ economically therefore and veiledly as yet arranging the things of moses in contrast with his own words that is to say putting the gospel preaching over against the law and setting the new teachings in very superior place to the elder ones he says if ye continue in my word verily ye are my disciples for they who are pre-eminent in perfect faith and unhesitatingly receive into their mind the gospel teaching not unduly regarding the shadow of the law are in truth disciples of christ while they who act not thus mock themselves not able to be in truth disciples and therefore falling away from salvation and verily the blessed paul to those who after the faith foolishly desire to be justified by the law openly writes ye were set free from christ whosoever of you are justified by the law ye fell from grace wondrous then and precious is single faith and the desire closely to follow christ drawing the shadows of the law unto the knowledge of him and transfashioning the things darkly spoken unto spiritual instruction for through the law and prophets is preached the mystery of him thirty two and ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free obscure as yet and not wholly clear is the word none the less it is replete with force akin to those before it and though after other fashion wrought will go through the same reflections 
for it too persuades those who have once believed gladly to depart and remove from the worship according to the law instructing that the shadow is our guide to the knowledge of him and that leaving the types and figures we should go resolutely forward to the truth itself that is to say christ the giver of true freedom and the redeemer ye shall know therefore he says the truth if ye abide in my words and from knowing the truth ye shall find the profit that is therefrom take then our lord as saying some such thing as this to the jews for we ought i think to enlarge our meditation on what is now before us for the profit's sake of the readers a bitter bondage in egypt he says ye endured and length and toil consumed you who had come into bitter serfdom under pharaoh but ye cried then to god and ye have moved him to mercy towards you bewailing the misfortunes which were upon you ye were seeking a redeemer from heaven forthwith i visited you even then and brought you forth from a strange land liberating you from most savage oppression i was inviting you unto freedom but that ye might learn who is your aider and redeemer i was limbing for you the mystery of myself in the sacrifice of the sheep and bidding it then to prefigure the salvation through blood for ye were saved by anointing both yourselves and the doorpost with the blood of the lamb hence by advancing a little forth from the types when ye learn the truth ye shall be holy and truly free and let none he says doubt about this for if the type was then to you the bestower of so great goods how does not the truth rather give you richer grace nothing forbids us to suppose that such were what jesus says to the jews if his discourse run out to a wide range of thought but it is probable that some other meaning also beams forth from what is before us the law through moses typified washings and sprinklings and moreover whosoever it befell to be caught and to fall into the pit of sin him it bade to sacrifice a bullock or sheep and thus to abate the blame for each one's transgressions but naught avail these things for the washing away of sin for they will never liberate the condemned from blame nor show free from obligation of punishment those by whom the divine law has been trampled for what will sacrifice of oxen profit a transgressor what gain will any one find in sacrificing of sheep for what will be pleasing from these as far as pertains to transgression of the law to god who has been insulted for hear him saying will i eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats and yet besides openly to the jews gather your whole burnt offerings unto your sacrifices and eat flesh for i speak not unto your fathers concerning whole burnt offerings or sacrifices but this thing commanded i them saying judge righteous judgment wholly profitless therefore is the approach through blood nor can it wash away the spot stained into the man through sin you will have another proof when you see him say to jerusalem the mother of the jews through the voice of jeremiah why wrought my beloved abominations in mine house shall prayers and holy flesh take away from thee thine evil or shall thou escape in these for it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins as paul saith but that they concerned about a fruitless worship and zealous to perform the offerings through blood or their gifts to no useful end were with reason sent away from the divine court he will teach again saying by the mouth of isaiah tread my courts no more if ye offer fine flour it is vain incense is an abomination unto me not in these therefore i mean the ordinances of the law is true salvation nor yet will any one win hence the thrice longed-for freedom i mean from sin 
but bounding a little above the types and surveying the beauty of the worship in spirit and acknowledging the truth that is christ we are justified through faith in him and justified we pass over unto the true liberty ranked no more among slaves as heretofore but among the sons of god and john will testify thus saying of christ and of them that believe on him but as many as received him to them he gave power to become children of god profitably then doth our lord and christ not suffer them who believe on him to marvel any more at the shadows of the law for there is not in them that profits or that bestows the true freedom but bids them rather know the truth for through this does he say that they shall be entirely freed according to the mind of the words thirty three we be abraham's seed and have never been in bondage to any man how sayest thou ye shall be made free they laugh at the promise of our saviour rather they even take it ill as though they were insulted for that which has no share at all of bondage how will it need he says of one who calls us unto freedom and who gives us a something over and above what is in us already but they know not though want to have a conceit of being wise that their forefather abraham was of no notable father after the world nor yet of highest repute among those who are admired in this life but was ennobled by faith only in god abraham believed god it says and faith was imputed to him for righteousness and he was called the friend of god thou seest then very clearly the cause of his illustriousness for since he was called the friend of god who ruleth over all he hath become on this account great and famed and his faith was imputed to him for righteousness and the righteousness which is of faith hath become to him the cause of freedom toward god therefore when he by believing was justified that is when he shook off the low birth that is from sin then did he appear illustrious and of noble birth and free foolishly then do the jews spurning the grace which freed the very founder of their race advance only to him who was freed thereby but considering neither whence is or whither looks what is illustrious in him they dishonour the giver of what is most excellent in him and forsaking the fount of all nobility they think greatly of him who is participate thereof but they will be caught vainly boasting of being never in bondage to any man and what they say about this will be no less proved to be false for they were in bondage to the egyptians for four hundred thirty years and through the grace that is from above were hardly delivered from the house of bondage and from the iron furnace as it is written to wit the tyranny of the egyptians and they were in bondage both to the babylonians and assyrians when they removing the whole country of judea and jerusalem itself transferred all israel to their own land in no respect then was the speech of the jews sane for besides being ignorant of their truer bondage that in sin they utterly deny the other ignoble one and have an understanding accustomed to think highly about a mere nothing thirty four the saviour answered them verily verily i say unto you whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin he lifts out of their innate unlearning these who were carnal and looking only to things corporal he transfers them to the more spiritual and removes them to a mode of teaching wholly unpractised and unwanted showing them their hidden and through long ages unknown bondage and that they falsely say to no man have we ever been in bondage he wisely passes by 
neither does he say that to no purpose do they boast of the nobility of their forefathers in order that he may not appear to be inciting to what was not right them who were already prone and much inclined to anger but advances to this needful matter and one which they needed verily to learn that he is sin's bondman who doth it as though he said thus a compound animal sirs is man upon the earth of soul that is and body and bondage as to the flesh pertains to the flesh but that of the soul and which takes place upon the soul has for its mother the barbarian sin the freedom then of man from bondage after the flesh the authority of the rulers will effect but that which sets free from sin is meet to be spoken of god alone and will belong to none other save he therefore he persuades them to think reasonably and to desire real and true freedom and thus to seek at length not the illustriousness of ancestors which nothing profits them thereto but rather god alone authoritative over his own laws the transgression whereof creates sin the foster-mother of bondage to the soul but our lord jesus christ seems to be privily as yet and full veiledly convicting them of vainly thinking great things of a man and imagining that the blessed abraham was altogether free for his showing generally that he who doeth sin is the bondman of sin makes abraham himself to have been once the bondman of sin and within its toils for he was justified not as being himself righteous but when he believed god then called to the freedom of being justified and not at all as quarrelling with the fame of the righteous man do we say this but since none among men is without trial of the darts of sin he too who is reputed great was surely brought under the yoke of sin as it is written there is none righteous for all sinned and have come short of the glory of god but the glory of god besides other things is the being utterly incapable of falling into sin which has been reserved for christ alone for he alone has been free among the dead for he did no sin albeit being among the dead that is reckoned among men over whom the death of sin once had mastery therefore for i will sum up the aim of what has been said the lord was hinting that the blessed abraham himself too having been once in bondage to sin and through faith alone to christward set free availed not to pass on to others the spiritual nobility since neither is he master of the power of freeing others who put away the bondage of sin not by himself nor was himself on himself the bestower of freedom but received it from another christ himself who justifieth End of chapter five part two chapter five part three of commentary in the gospel of john book five by cyril of alexandria translated by rev philip edward pusey this librivox recording is in the public domain thirty five the servant abideth not in the house for ever the son abideth ever having shown that unfree and in bitter bondage is he who is subject to sin he adds profitably both what will happen to him who hath loved bondage and what again shall be their lot from god who have chosen to live after the law and have therefore been ranked among the sons of god for the bondman he says abideth not in the house for ever for indeed and verily he shall go forth into the utter darkness there to pay the penalty of his enslaved life but the son abideth ever for they who have once enjoyed the honour of adoption shall abide in the presence of god in no time thrust forth from the court of the first-born but rather passing a long and lasting season therein and you will understand accurately what is said 
if you bring forward and read the gospel parable wherein christ it says shall set the goats on the left the sheep on the right and that he shall send away the goats saying depart ye cursed into the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels and shall gather the sheep to himself and receive them graciously crying out come ye blessed of my father inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world for by the goats is meant the unfruitful multitude of them who love sin by the sheep the choir of the pious laden with the fruit of righteousness as though wool therefore he who beareth the disgrace of bondage shall be thrust forth of the kingdom of heaven like some useless and basest vessel every one who loveth to live aright shall be received and shall abide therein and be ranked therefore among the sons of god and it seems likely that the lord in saying these things hints also to them that if they admit not the freedom that comes through faith they shall surely depart forth of the holy and divine court that is the church as is said by one of the prophets i will drive them out of mine house for that that which was aforespoken has reached its fulfilment the very nature of things attests for the daughter of zion was left as a tent in a vineyard as a lodge in a garden of cucumbers as it is written wholly fallen and destroyed is the temple and themselves have gone forth not abiding therein for ever and in their place hath arisen and been raised up for christ's sake the church of the gentiles and they abide in it ever who have been called to divine sonship through faith for the boast of the church will never cease nor ever fail for the souls of the righteous depart from things of earth and are safely moored at the city that is above the heavenly jerusalem the church of the firstborn which is our mother according to the voice of paul but since examining into what was said about bondage and desiring every way to track out the truth we have said that abraham himself was numbered among bondmen and not even him did we put outside the boundary of our contemplations because of its being said more generally by christ whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin come now let us following out our own words make clear the force of what has been said the jews were thinking great and excessive things putting forward abraham as a sort of head and fount of their nobility but that it needed to seek to be freed through the grace that is from above they admitted not even in bare thought fools and blind according to the saviour's voice needs therefore does christ design to show that what is by nature bond sufficeth not for the freedom of others nor yet one whit for its own for how can that which lacks freedom as to its own nature give freedom to itself and that which borrows its own grace from another how will it suffice for the supply of another to him alone who is by nature god of god will be fit and rightly be ascribed the power of freeing clear proof therefore gives he that all must needs be and be acknowledged bond that abides not for ever that is to say to which belongs not being always the same for every thing created will surely be also subject to corruption and that which is so will be bondservant of god who called it into being for respecting the creatures it was said to him for all things are thy servants and this which is said is general and one portion of the whole is the blessed abraham or again the whole human nature but the abiding for ever gives a clear sign that the only begotten god who shines forth from god is king and lord of all for to whom will pertain the being always the same and being established in firm tenure of the everlasting good things 
save to him who is by nature god for in this way doth the divine psalmist too show us that the creature is bond god the word which beamed of god the father king and lord for extending the mental view from a portion to the whole of creation he says of the heavens and of him who is by nature's son they shall perish but thou abidest and they all shall wax old like a garment and as a covering shalt thou change them and they shall be changed but thou art the same and thy year shall not fail seest thou how by this too exceeding well and true confessedly it is that the bond abideth not for ever but the son abideth and that the non-abiding is a proof that that is bond of which it is predicated and by analogy the other that is to say the abiding for ever will be a clear token of his being lord and god of whom such a word may be properly and truly said sufficient then were the psalmist to testify to what we say but since as it is written in the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established come let us besides him show the blessed jeremiah too thinking and saying consonantly for he showing that every thing that is made from its being corruptible is therefore bond and showing that the son because he abides and is unchangeable is by nature god and manifestly therefore also lord says thus to him for thou endurest for ever and we perish for ever for at every time will the originate be corruptible by reason of its having been made even though by the power of god it decay not and god will ever sit what is here called sitting indicating the stability and unchanged fixedness of his essence together with its concentration and its illustriousness in royal appearance and reality for sitting has an image of these therefore for i will go back to what i said at the beginning from his not abiding for ever he shows that the blessed abraham is corruptible and originate for he has died and passed in a way out of the lord's house that is to say this world by the same reasoning he would have us conceive of him as bond also and so not competent to bestow freedom upon others and from the son abiding ever he says that he is clearly god of god by nature whereon will surely follow the being king and lord and what is the economy from the above-mentioned distinction shall be shown in the next that in order follows thirty six if the son shall make you free ye shall be free indeed to him alone he says who is by nature son of a truth free and remote from all bondage is found to pertain the power of freeing and to none other whatever save he for as he because he is by nature wisdom and light and power makes wise the things recipient of wisdom enlightens those that lack light and strengthens those that want strength so because he is god of god and the genuine and free fruit of the essence that reigns over all he bestows freedom on whomsoever he will for no one can become truly free at his hands who has it not of nature but when the son himself wills to free any infusing his own good they are called free indeed receiving the dignity from him who hath the authority and not from any of those who have been lent it from another and been ennobled with so to say foreign graces most needful therefore is the preceding explanation and great the profit which arises from that distinction to those who are zealous to hear it more diligently for it was right to understand why it should be needful to seek for nobility towards god and to learn that the son can make us free 
let them then who rejoice in the dignities of the world use themselves not to be swollen with lofty conceits nor let them run down the glory and grace of the saints even though they should be little and spring of little after the flesh for not the seeming to be illustrious among men suffices to nobility before god but splendour in life and virtuous ways render a man free indeed and noble joseph was sold for a bond slave as it is written but even so was he free all radiant in the nobility of soul esau was born of a free father and was really free but by the baseness of his ways he showed a slave befitting mind noble therefore before god as we have just said are not they who have riches and are flooded with superfluity of substance and rejoice in the bright honours that are in the world but they who are radiant with holy life and an ordered conversation thirty seven i know that ye are abraham's seed but ye are seeking to kill me because my word hath no place in you having manifoldly shown them that the boast and conceit from their being of kin to abraham is utterly empty and devoid of any good he says this that they may seek the nobility that is true and dear to god for god looks not on the flesh according to what is said by our saviour christ himself the flesh profiteth nothing but rather accepts in accounts worthy of all praise nobility of soul and knows that they have true kinship whom likeness of work or sameness of manners gathering unto one virtue causes to be ennobled with equal forms of good and similarly the contrary since how are we who are of earth and compacted of clay as it is written called kin of the lord of all as paul saith for as much then as we are the offspring of god for confessedly have we been made kin to him because of the flesh that pertains to the mystery of christ but it is possible in another way also to see this truly existing for by thinking his thoughts and resolving in no cursory manner to live piously we are called sons of god who is over all and forming our own mind after his will as far as we can thus are we to likeness with him and most exact similitude truly kin but that god does take likeness and accurate similitude of works or of ways to have the force of kinship we shall surely know if we look closely into the holy words and explore the holy scripture in the times therefore of jeremiah the prophet there was a certain false prophet shemaiah the nehelamite by name belching things forth of his own heart as it is written and not out of the mouth of the lord and since there was some other great multitude of lying witnesses and false prophets going about among the people drawing them away to what was not meet god the lord of all was at last rightly indignant then after having expended many words upon shemaiah and declared more in detail what penalties he should pay for his deed of daring at last he adds and i will visit upon shemaiah and his seed who do like deeds with him hearest thou how he sees kindred in like attempts for how could he who judgeth right punish along with shemaiah his seed after the flesh not like mannered with himself as regards baseness albeit he says clearly by the prophet ezekiel the soul that sinneth it shall die in order then that one may not imagine anything of this sort respecting him having said his seed he immediately added who do like deeds with him defining kindred to be in sameness of action but that we may see that what is said is true of the very jews let us call to mind the words of john i mean the holy baptist for showing that rotten was their boast of kindred with abraham he says 
and say not within yourselves we have abraham for a father for i say unto you that god is able of these stones to raise up seed unto abraham for since it had been said unto him by god multiplying i will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven the people of the jews resting upon the promiser being surely and of necessity on lying were thinking big and expecting that in no wise could they fall from the kinship to their ancestor that the divine promise may be kept but the blessed baptist annihilating this their hope very clearly says god is able of these stones to raise up children unto abraham and with these falls in the blessed paul too thus saying for not all they of israel are these israel neither because they are the seed of abraham are they all children it being shown therefore on all sides to be true that god acknowledges kindred in manners and habits clearly vain is it to boast of holy and good ancestors and be left behind and depart far away from their virtue with reason therefore does the lord say to the jews i know that ye are abraham's seed yet do ye seek to kill me because my word hath no place in you yea he says when i look to the flesh alone and consider whence the people of the jews sprang then i see that ye are of the seed of abraham but when i look at the beauty of his conversation and disposition i see that ye are aliens and no longer kin for ye are seeking to kill me albeit your forefather of whom ye now think great things was no murderer and worst and most lawless of all on no just pretext am i persecuted by you but ye desire to kill me in utter injustice for for this reason alone did ye devise to destroy me because my word hath no place in you albeit calling you to salvation and life it hath no place in you because of the sin that indwelleth in you and which suffereth not advice and counsel for good to have any room in you murderers therefore alike and most unrighteous judges are the jews determining that they ought to award to death him who nothing wronged them but rather was engaged in doing them good and zealous to save them how then are they any longer kin to the righteous and good abraham who are so far behind the good that was in him and have strayed so far from like conduct with him as one would admit were distant and say were parted vice from virtue thirty eight i speak that which i have seen with my father do ye then do that which ye heard from the father uncontained by the jews did he say that his word was and having said that this was the only reason why they were incited against him yea rather convicting them of desiring even to kill him needs does he add these things also and why i will set forth he was not ignorant it appears that some of the jews would rise up and dispute his words and belching forth from their innate madness say again not for nothing as thou sayest do some desire to slay thee for reasonable causes are they stimulated thereto pious is their motion and their zeal free from all just accusal for without place in them is thy word seeing thou madest it dissonant from god thou teachest us he says another error and drawest us off from the way of the law and removest us to that which pleases thyself alone the jews then whispering these things privately or imagining them in their hearts the lord again meets them knowing the motions of their imaginations within for he is very god and therefore says i speak that which i have seen with my father i beheld close the nature of father i saw oft times of myself and in myself him who begat me and am a beholder of the will that is in him i saw 
by innate knowledge that is of what works he is the lover and these i speak to you i shall not be found to say aught dissonant to him nor have i appointed anything other than pleases him to that was i earnest in calling my hearers not departing from what is mine for in me are his and mine again in him but if i who am thus by nature and am in all things co-willer with god the father appear to you to be not true and am a judge to be leading you away from the divine teachings let the charge be dismissed cast away suspicion do that which he heard from the father he hath spoken to you by moses accomplish the command ye heard him say the innocent and righteous slay thou not how then are ye seeking to kill me and breaking the father's commandment but in another way again will we take the words do ye then do that which ye heard from the father he has spoken to you he says through the prophets ye heard him say rejoice greatly o daughter of zion shout o daughter of jerusalem behold thy king cometh unto thee he is just and having salvation and mounted upon a colt the foal of an ass and again through the voice of isaiah o zion that bringest good tidings get thee up into the high mountain o jerusalem that bringest good tidings lift up thy voice with strength lift ye up be not afraid behold your god behold the lord cometh with strength and his arm with rule behold his reward with him and his work before him like a shepherd shall he feed his flock he shall gather the lambs with his arm and shall comfort those that are with young obeying therefore the commands of the father receive him who is foreannounced to you honour with faith him who has been forepreached give at least to the words of the father to prevail in you but we must know that he says that the law is god the father's albeit spoken by him through angels not putting himself outside of the law giving but he yielding to the surmises of the jews who believed that it was so and economically does not oppose himself to their surmise for oft times doth he shame them since they receive him not for he brings before them the father's name End of chapter 5, part 3